Good evening, everyone. Happy quarantine. Okay. okay. Welcome to Get the Fork Out, everyone. Uh, this week we have Ed Dunnett, one of my dear friends, uh, ex Yachty. Used to be in the game. Used to be in the game. Left the game for another oh. brand new game that is uh, basically just onshore sellers. He is a wine uh, provisioner and he does all kinds of cool stuff within that space to help crew, maybe with investments, with wine storage, but we will get all of that. Ed Dunnett. Welcome to Get the Fork Out. How you doing, man? Thanks, mate. Yeah, I'm really well. Thanks for having me on. I've been watching your last ones, and we've been trying to do this for a while, actually, so I'm glad we've got to it. <laughs> yeah, it's always a struggle. Sadly, both it, busy. Yes, yes, both very busy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not always my fault, but it's mostly my fault because I'm I'm constantly moving. And now oh, I'm it's trying to do it when you were in uh, on a different time zone as well and trying to figure out when we could share a glass of wine together with yeah. a 10 hour difference and, and we're not as young as we used to be when drinking 24 hours a day was whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah if i have a glass of wine at 9 a.m i don't know what that day looks like now you know i, yeah, don't, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know what that, that, that morphs into yeah that so when i was in california no. I, I was trying to do these interviews uh via via zoom on uh you can come in yeah just leave it here yeah yeah just leave a pile anyway oh. Is it, is it your dirty laundry again? The girls have yeah, folded it's, it. It's, right my, this it's time. the crew. Yeah. The crew platters are back. Um, yeah. yeah. So recording on the West Coast was very hard. It's a ten-hour difference, and just coordinating times is absolutely brutal. I'm glad it's over. I am in Croatia. Ed, where are you? Talk to us. Where yeah, are you? Uh, we're. Uh, I'm in, in on TV actually, just outside. Um, nice. Yeah, just, uh, we've got, this is my new warehouse. I won't, I've got a big computer, so I won't sort of try and swing Epic. it around. And it's, it's pretty. Could you? It's not messy. Could you try yeah, to? It's messy. Could you yeah, pick I'll, up the I'll have a quick, and... <laughs> quick scan. <laughs> you can see how heavy this is. Oh, the trap. He fell we're, into uh, the trap. we're sort of mid beginning of That's the season awesome. and kind of mid sort of getting everything in here and together because we've moved, we had a shop in Antibes and uh, last year sort of proved retail was fairly buggered. So we've moved wow. to a bigger space and I've got some new staff and uh, new things are happening. And yeah, it's exciting. And it's certainly easier for me, I think, being here rather than trying to land stuff in a tiny little shop and, and essentially operate what should be a warehouse business out of a pedestrian zone in Antibes was, was testing. Well, that was actually one of my questions of how, how COVID uh, affected you. And for those that don't know, Onshore Sellers, the name of Ed's business, had this amazing boutique wine shop <laughs> in the heart of uh, this walled, uh, castled uh, medieval city in the south of France. It, it was an epic shop. So then COVID happened, and like you just said, Ed, it, it just dried up retail. Yeah. So is that, is that shop no longer? uh we've let the shop go i think last year not i think we did 10 percent in the retail <laughs> what we've done the year before so it was we were revenue was lower than rent so it was a bit of a no-brainer to leave yeah it was sad we'd i put a lot of work into um i know you did what was i thought was a really epic store it was kind of an old yeah 400 year old uh, uh place in the center of an old town in, in france <laughs> But we eventually grew out of it. So, uh, yeah, COVID had a huge effect on us. I think, like everyone. Um, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it was it was a fairly fairly sharp impact as well. We lost like a, a huge amount of quotes and orders were lost within a week. And so, what we were looking at was we we'd stocked up and got ready for the season. And you know, pre season we probably put 100, 150 grand into sort of quick moving stock and bits like that and we pre-ordered things that would be difficult to get for the summer so when that all sort of dropped off uh yeah well, we had to try and think of ways to diversify and uh and not having the retail outlet that no one was allowed in uh we, we yeah we've done a lot to sort of try and weather that storm but thankfully we've got lots of our bigger clients uh have just been going it's um it's been useful to have uh have some fairly loyal clients and, and the ability to ship anywhere means that actually it didn't make 
in the end, it didn't make a huge difference, but at the beginning, it was yeah, it was pretty scary. I uh, think well, I certainly imagine. business wise, and obviously health wise, and worried about everyone else as well. But right. um, yeah, at the beginning, yeah, I, we were uh, it was fairly worrying. No, it's, I think it's been interesting to watch um, friends and family do do massive pivots during this time where you know it's quite aggressive, and I wouldn't wish it on any of any of us. But you've seen some really remarkable yeah. outcomes. I think it's it's been quite quite cool. Yeah, like, I think I'm allowed to say that to, to watch people morph into for, something for us, a little bit more uh, streamlined. Oh, I knew you. Yeah, for us, it, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but Stanford. if anyone else is watching, I do have a habit of interrupting Brandon <laughs> just on purpose yeah, and by yeah. accident. So uh, it's like a tick, really. Uh, uh, usually, it's with a pun. Yeah, it's been. It's been. Uh, you know what? As as, as shit as shit as it's been, it's been really useful exercise. We have done a load on the business in terms of our processes, our inventory system, and then diversifying. And we found new clients outside of yachting, so we're not so reliant on one specific industry. And That's at amazing. the end of the day, we sell wine. So, you know, everyone drinks and we notice a huge uptick online in, in the sense of people just drinking more at home and not getting into restaurants. So they're spending more at home on different wines. And yeah, so out of every disaster, there is normally an opportunity. But it's been, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of work from all the team and, and everyone here sort of just trying to work under fairly strained conditions. Um, but yeah, I'm glad we're, appear to be i don't know they're on the other side of it but we appear to be closer <laughs> at least yeah I don't know. yeah completely and and more streamlined for yeah. a future without retail but it, hopefully that's not the case yeah, exactly. we, we don't know yet well i mean everyone's buying everything online and i think once you realize how easy it is it's hard to go back and for me did i buy i used to buy wine online before um starting on shore sellers and it's it's more of a case of that it would just be at my door i don't need to drag it around the supermarket and i can find exactly what i want and i don't have to drink stuff that's only sold in supermarkets because i'm too lazy yeah. to go to a great store like on shore sellers <laughs> right plus um, you, you can avoid the, so yeah, the judgmental think, stairs of the, of the checkout clerk just yeah like, why, yeah why are yeah. you judging me just let me buy my wine well, I've got uh, I've got a couple of friends around here. I'll name him because I, I do want to shame him. Chris Irish, <laughs> who uh, who has <laughs> who has to buy stuff. He buys through us, then he buys in the supermarket. And he buys somewhere else because he's too embarrassed to buy the whole lot from one place. <laughs> the amount he drinks. <laughs> right. No, I get it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Spread it around. So uh, no no judgmental stares from a checkout clerk, please. No. no. Yeah. Exactly. So um, how's life with you, Bren? How's uh, how's this this new thing? You're uh, how's, how is this get the fork out going? I've been watching uh, it fairly regularly. It's going well. I feel like it, it's fun to do. So yeah, I, I try not to look at the numbers because I it's not why I do it. But I end up learning so much stuff from from you guys, and I love doing it. And it's uh, but it just takes a, the only unfortunate thing is that it takes a bit of time to organize, you know, with other people that are in different time zones, have Wi-Fi. I spend so much time looking for goddamn Wi-Fi. Like it is, it's probably <laughs> what I do more than interview is like, I'm, I'm going around with my phone, literally like with uh, uh, speedtest.net. If anyone wants to figure out how fast your Wi-Fi yeah. is, speedtest.net. <laughs> and you go around and you're like, okay, this is good. I got 22 megabyte upload or 22 megabyte download. It's like, oh man, I was in a campground in California. Just like, Oh man, I wish I had a film of that, just me looking for Wi Fi. It's, it, I do it more than interviews, like I said, but it's going well. Like, I really like it. It's yes. just it's trying, to, trying to find the time. I'm, I'm luckily, I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on a vessel that will allow me to keep doing them. Um, so it's once a week, yeah. try to, but it's a struggle, man. It's, it's, not, it's not easy it's to just, find the it's time. A, I mean, I ask because we've, we've started doing more stuff on YouTube and other sort of social media things and and then different outlet to marketing because obviously there's no there's no boat shows at the moment and there's it's right. difficult to go and do or certainly last year was difficult to dot walk so you've still got to get and we used to do a lot of events at the shop and yeah and i ask because it, it's a lot of work trying to diversify into doing online um, media so videos yeah. and interviews and podcast and and it is there's a lot of work involved and it's fairly relentless and it takes seemingly a long time to sort of build something up. So 
Yeah, it's, I, it's I nice agree. to watch what you're doing and, and see how it's building and how we can learn from me. I guess we're learning from you as well. And, uh, oh, we're, and yeah, we're get, learning from each other. Get, I like the word relentless. Get content out. Like, yeah. You get like a bit reprieve of after you do one and then you should be actually filming the next one and it's getting ready. And it's like, it always feels like a last second thing. And then um, obviously, you know, it gets uploaded first to Yachty International Radio and then I post it a week or two later. So it's, yeah, well, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to, uh, I'm going to get some help, I think. Um, oh, internet connection is unstable. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. So yeah, I think it's just, uh, I'm getting some yeah. help. I got this guy, a friend of a friend, who's going to help me with the editing um, because hopefully doing some more quarantine kitchen type stuff. So as much as I said it's relentless, I'm about to add to it. So yeah. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Yes. Um, but just to get someone to help. Well, it's, it's, it's consistency, I think, as well. It's... it's Mm, yeah so you, you need to have you need to be doing it every week and every no matter what without fail you're like no matter what i know what your lifestyle's like having been on a boat it's it's it just there's so many things that can come up that take you yeah. away from what you plan to yeah. do just some work let alone when you start getting out with the crew and drinking <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i have this analogy it's like with other chefs that you're always in the shit as a yacht chef like, it's not like a restaurant chef where you're like, oh, I come in, you know, I prep myself up the day before. I should be good going in today. It's like, even when you're completely prepared, you're always kind of in the shit because you do not know what can happen. The weather could kick up, you know, so, so three guests could show up. Like all these yeah. things can just, the variables are insane, as you already know. So we'll, we'll see how it goes, but, the, the, you know, never let the job suffer. That's the most important part. But if I can find the time, um, I'll do it. If I can't, can't do it gotta pay the bills man yeah yeah it's um it's yeah it's also an interesting for me it's quite a new it's certainly a new area for me it's interesting it's interesting to see how people to consume information where they get yeah. it from what they're yeah. listening to and it, you know it's it's trying to understand it as well when you uh I'm, I'm not necessarily a huge user of social media or youtube or any of the other sort of platforms so it's for me, it's an even bigger learning curve, not really understanding why people watch these yeah. things anyway. But uh, yeah, I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts. It's probably just showing my age rather than anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it, it, I don't yeah, think Yeah, but you're right. Any, anything comes up. And it's, uh, yeah, so people, gotta, things I'm, just come up all the time. Yeah, I got to bring up my lighting. So I, I'm using a camera that's international, but the I, if I have the, the lighting on in the galley, it just it flickers like crazy. So that's why it looks like there's a flashlight on me. I'm just looking at myself now. I look like ridiculous, but uh, <laughs> that's fine. Look, and I'm using this little like, <laughs> because there'll be this like crazy ass flicker if I just leave the lights on. Um, Ed, excuse me. Why don't you talk about some of the yeah. investment opportunities <laughs> that uh, you used to do? Or I don't know, do you still do those sort of oh. things for, for crew? In, in wine? Um, yeah, you, you know, mo most of them are more for sort of, <laughs> originally when we set up the business, I had an idea which was to, well, I mean, we started this with relatively very little money. And so I was looking at exploring options into how to create a stock business without having to finance it myself. So I was looking at investments for crew, so crew buy wine, uh, as it's released as an investment with a, you know, potentially looking to sell it in five years or 10 years or drink it for themselves. The idea was to create a stock for myself. I could then call on the crew and then I have, a, rather than just offering to sell them the wine and I have an actual offer, you know, in three or four or five years time, we have a route to market for you and we're, right. we can sell it direct to the boats and that it's an easier way to cash out. And typically if you're investing wine in London, they take, a percentage at the beginning, a percentage at the end, they charge you for storage fees. And the reality is you probably won't walk away with much, but that's a whole nother business in itself. So I didn't, I, I did a few bits. I've done some stuff with you and some other friends. And more recently I've put together a, a group of us to buy a uh, casting Macallan, which is quite cool, I think. Oh yeah, you're so pushing that. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, I've got a, I won't say how much it is, but it's it's in the <laughs> hundreds of thousands. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's absurd. Yeah. Uh, quite a quite a few hundred thousand, and it's uh, a twenty-four-year-old Carson McCallan, 
and again the view is it's actually just a group of friends and some clients and uh and some of their friends actually and it's it's just a casual <laughs> casual investment of casual. uh yeah casual oh, well, hopefully we'll be able to um we'll sell it 24 years old now so the view is to try and sell it at 30 years and in theory if we're if i'm right we'll we'll make a, a reasonable return but like all right. of these things it's an investment it's speculation what i what i quickly discovered is i don't want to start selling things to crew uh and then realize that or not realize and then the market changes and then you're the guy who's taking the shit about their investment yeah. going down I right stick to the core of core of what we sort of started with um and Jess and I, my wife and I, who started this, we were on yachts for it was eight years, and Jess was a little longer. She stayed on to pay for some of this, and uh, yeah, we we just thought we'd create something that was kind of crew helping crew. So that was the original concept, and onshore sellers was the name, and in, in the sense that you had your sellers ashore, and that you could keep your wine here rather than ruining it on the yachts and we we just organize all the logistics for the owner's house and yacht and everything from one singular place and you just carry what you need around rather than you know four million euro of wine on a boat for three years it's it's not going to age it very well so that was the concept <coughs> and obviously once you start a business <laughs> your uh your ideals are, are, or what you want to achieve is, is effectively tempered by compromises yeah. and reality of finances etc so yeah it's, it's been a long old slog yeah yeah i think um i think we've we've done what we aimed to do which is was set up let me one second brendan i'm just gonna yeah, pass yeah, it go over to um oh this is gonna be a live phone call watch everyone as he uh passes on the responsibility to someone else Let's see how long it takes. Um, oh, that was fast. Sorry, I've got one. Well, that was fast. Doing, doing nothing. No, I passed it over. I've got, I'll, thankfully, we've got I'll, staff now. <laughs> I was narrating. I yeah. was just, just wondering how long it would take okay. for you to pass the responsibility over. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 pretty, I'm good. pretty good at passing the buck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, um, what what, what I, boat did I, you work yeah. on? What, 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 what was your time? Tell us a little bit about your time and yachting and like, Look, both. Ah, where'd you go? Gosh. So I, I came down here. Uh, one thing led to another, and I ended up doing five years living up in Val d'Isere, sort of originally going to be six months, and then ended up there, sort of summers and winters for five years. And thought, nice place. At some point, I need to get back to reality. So I thought I'd take the summer off and help a couple of mates out who were captains on boats who'd work the, work the winters up in the Alps and come captain in the summer. And so I had day work for the summer. So I came down here to bum around effectively and, and enjoy the sun and the beach and fell into yachting. I wasn't going to take a full-time job. I wasn't looking for a full-time job, but I got offered a job in uh, Doha in Qatar and Ooh. just thought, it's an opportunity to go and live somewhere where I don't think I'll ever have an opportunity or in a region where I've never right. thought I'd live and an experience that actually I never thought I would, would have. So I took it. Um, I think instantly regretted it actually, probably within the first hour of being off the plane. Because of the sand? <laughs> was the sand the issue? Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, maybe I hadn't given it enough thought. <laughs> it's quite a culture shock, but it was, I'm glad I did it. I enjoyed it. Good, I was there for eight years. Definitely. Yeah. One second. One second. Yeah. Yeah. One. Second. So we have uh, it's one twenty nine, counting down. Yeah. Oh, that was even faster. Ed. That was only three seconds. Oh, this there's a delivery, but I've closed the uh, the big shutter. Just lock them out. <laughs> yeah. No more delivery. I'm trying to, I'm trying to mini minimize disturbances today. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm glad I I'm glad I did it. It was fun. It was an eye opener. I, I learned a lot about I think people in general in the in the sense that yeah, if you have these preconceptions of different cultures and places. And in reality, I think people are wholly the same in every every country. There's a certain level of people you like. There's a certain level of people you yeah. never like, and there's the rest of the assholes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was good. I, 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 I did enjoy it. 
I believe it's the same ratio of assholes across the board. As much as we like to single out groups, it of definitely people, is. Yeah. Like, no, they're assholes. It's like no. I mean, this is a little thing I cooked up on the motorcycle trip. Is like just everyone has ninety nine point nine percent of people are good. Everyone wants to be loved and to to love and to be loved, and everyone has these families that they want to take care of. Therefore, at the core of it, we're, we're identical. We're completely identical. There's no yeah. way inside those parameters that you're allowed to be assholes, unless one caveat: you're either thirsty or you're hungry. And I don't mean like hangry. I mean my baby starving. Yeah, yeah. Then you tend to yeah, do no. things a little more violent. You get a little more aggressive. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, social context plays a big role in how you are. In the sense, if if, if you need to eat what would you do to eat? Right. Especially if you need your family to eat. So then, yeah. But yeah, as, as, a, as a rule, without getting too deep, neither of us are psychologists, but we've spent a lot of time drinking, so we understand <laughs> everything. <laughs> pontificating. I believe it's called pontificating. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. It's, um, a, uh, it's, a, yeah. it's a cool world out there, though. Like, and you, it, it's so much safer than you realize once you understand that everyone is innately good you need to be aware of yeah most people are there to help and that most people exactly yeah yeah and, and they want the experience you know you're going out to different like as you're traveling around the world you're going for an experience and the experience is there for you but also the people you meet the experience of it's, meeting some weird american chef who's traveling the world right. on the bike yeah no, yeah. I, I would, if I had a superpower, I would so love to be able to speak every single language in the world because the capacity for adventure in another language, in another country, is so much higher. Like you would just get abducted in the best way into the coolest adventures yeah. on the planet if you could speak every language. And that's what I would want because you just stumble around, you do the touristy stuff, and it's fun. But it's also I'm understanding the, uh, the the cultural differences, don't you? If you understand the language, you understand, and you understand the background of the culture. You know, I live, I live in France, and I still find the culture in France actually quite strange. Well, it doesn't, Difficult. it shouldn't appear to be too different. We should be English and French. You'd think they're fairly similar, but the core social culture of France is. It's, it's difficult to, it's difficult to understand but yeah i think yeah. if you understand the education system you understand the language you understand why people have a different approach to things that you think are so logical another way but yeah it's all yeah. these subtle differences that makes people different yeah but the core isn't in the stone gaining perspective it's getting on, deep on brennan things. this is getting it's very good. deep it's good yeah. get the fork out man let's get it out let's get it yeah. out um, it's all what, about, so, uh, yeah. What about, so you've made this massive pivot from retail to warehouse. And like, I, I think you had a really good point too about how you were basically trying to do a warehouse business out of a shop. And then once you realize that probably because of COVID, let's get a warehouse and dish to retail. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the goal last year was to have a warehouse in addition to the shop. And, uh, right. just because we were, we were year four of a six year of rolling lease anyway we effectively had another two years that we'd have to pay for so um thankfully with covid that helped us negotiate out of it however right. uh, without covid we would have took it took we would have taken a warehouse in addition to the shop and the shop is a really cool it was it was set up effectively for a showroom so yep. you pull into one team you can bring your crew we used to do loads of events with the whole interior team or the whole uh, the whole yacht or even the owners would come in we do private tastings and we do stuff for the locals as well and we'd have but yeah all sorts of fun events going on and that was i think yeah two or three we took the shop and that sort of completed what we were trying to do which was be somewhere where the crew can come and hang out and you know yeah maybe the crew that was uh, that was kind of our uh, motto i guess crew helping crew for a long time i think it yeah. still is mantra um yeah well you know we understand it from both sides and it's difficult from both sides and you, you kind of understand why people are being so pedantic about the size of a perrier bottle or, or <laughs> so pedantic it's so about true. the opening on a it's so true it's <laughs> in the fridge you know, in the fridge without the having 
without having lived it yeah yeah if you haven't lived the other side of understanding why your owner's wife just wants the sports cap at evian 32 centiliters that are only made in estonia shipped in just for her trip you like this is mental but yeah uh yeah so we understand why why it's so right you know, so important to, i guess to get it could get it right because yeah. ultimately it comes as on their head and they have to deal with potentially someone who's less than happy about it who doesn't see the funny side of drinking out the wrong size Evian bottle <laughs> it's not humorous it's not humorous <laughs> what what does your season look like? Yeah. like are you seeing comparable numbers no coming it's not but i mean orders? i just jumped right yeah, the, this last uh, month i mean i've i've yeah, no, I've, this last month we've, um, I've, since COVID, I've decided rather than contract and try and make everything smaller, I've expanded. Contract COVID. <laughs> counterintuitive. And I looked at it as, well, I look, we contracted certainly in our revenue last year, but I've spent more money this year with a view that while everyone else is suffering the same as us, likely, it's a good opportunity yeah. to come guns blazing and sure. uh you know with the right support knowing that we've got we're going to need more people to do things because everything takes longer and it's more difficult and so make sure we're fully crewed and ready and last month was testament to i think our preparedness we had a best month certainly for over a year our best uh yeah it's been a, it was an amazing month and i think looking forward it's hard to get overexcited having seen stuff change so rapidly last year. Yeah. But, I uh, feel but yeah, I think it's looking like a good summer. But you, you, you know what can happen is we've got charters, but this year um, I'm, I'm hesitant to get excited until we've delivered because last year we had charter orders booked and we we're ready to go and sold. And in the end, you just, yeah. So uh, I think this summer's, we all hope, I think we'll, we'll see end of June once they open up some more restrictions in France and Italy and Spain and lots yeah. of boats. I think you're, you're in Croatia now, no? Yeah, we have a yeah. time we charter starting in a couple of days. So it's, it's our yeah. season is going to be good, but that would, we were just the kind of lucky ones that would book these clients that have been booking boats for, you know, over a year for to stay away from COVID. So no, it's a good it's yeah. definitely it's good to have, but I, it's no I can't use our like charter bookings as a barometer of whether or not the season's gonna pick up or the season's gonna go back to normal. But I, I hear what you're saying about the we're all missing that foundation of stability that we used to have where it's like I think it's gonna be good. Yep. It feels good yeah. now. Yeah yeah and yeah. in a week it could be all gone. Uh -huh. Sucks. I think you're seeing it with people not spending their savings and saving more. Well, the fact yeah. that you can't go out anyway. But I, I yeah, I have a, a, <laughs> for us, I'm just a little bit more cautious this year than actually last year as well. But you yeah, know, you just it'd be great to think it's going to be a nice long summer, but anything can, as we've proven. But yeah, yeah I'm, I'm quietly confident to, to, <laughs> to create quietly a really confident. long answer to a Is, simple question. I have never confident. heard the term quietly confident put towards you ever before. Uh, yeah, yeah. Boisterously confident, loudly yeah, confident. We'll That's usually <laughs> Ed's, Ed's kind of MO. Yeah, we'll see. Certainly the charter bookings we're seeing, like yours, are longer. I think people, yeah, if they're going to commit to going away, why, why not go away for two months? And we've all proven we can work from wherever. So if you've got a, a boat with decent internet, it doesn't really matter where you are anymore. It's uh, a lot of remote working, everything, all the shopping and stuff can be done online. And why not go and have a, a chef cook for you every day and people pamper you and you know, exactly. if you've got the money, let's spend it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that has yeah, yeah. been a, a truth too. I think there's a delay on this call. So if it sounds like I'm interrupting you, I'm not. It's just a delay. Um, although sometimes I do need to interrupt you because, uh, well, you know why. Uh, but there's a uh, yeah. there's a way like does this go forward these long ass charters that's that's the thing and I do I mean I guess it just depends on COVID and, and how the yeah the vaccines work or or not let's see yeah yeah I, I I guess so I think I don't know it's a time will tell yeah 
yeah. time will tell. But it's yeah. all hope that uh, everyone at least has a busy enough summer. I mean, us and everyone else in the yachting market are just, for those who struggled last year, we, I know there's a lot of people who need to do a reasonable amount of business this year just to stay alive and that those who did yeah. take loans and stuff at yeah. some point they will have to be paid yeah. back and so yeah there's a there's a mounting debt burden on i'd imagine on a lot of a lot of companies and suppliers yeah Obviously, i would think I so think, yeah, we're, 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 we're lucky in twofold that with one we sell wine and everyone drinks wine yeah and secondly, we, 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 yeah secondly we, we, we work with with yachts and and fairly high net worth individuals around the world yeah. and, and actually normal people. So we're, we've got, from what I can see, the rich have, some have got richer and there's some, a yes. lot of new, very rich people. Yeah. So I think we're fairly lucky in a lot of senses that our own or your owners and the charterers are still spending lots of money and there's still yacht crew are still employed and most yachts are still to some degree working and busy. I um I was in yachting during the uh, this will this will come back to your point we just said in a second but like I was in yachting when the global financial crisis happened and the same thing I watched other people get their boats chained to the dock basically in collections yeah and then I watched other people just buy that same boat as their second boat or a bigger boat like uh, I think the rich can pivot quickly and and earn massively in times like this. I think it was Winston Churchill that said like the time to buy is when there's blood on the streets or something like that. But I think we're yeah. seeing some of that now and I'm seeing it for the second time because I've been in it so long. Uh, and I think what you said was true is like you have this access to this industry where kind of, you know, no matter what, it's going to be yachting is going to be running and you are now as certain countries close up, <laughs> you can just be sending because the yachts will go to the countries that are open and you can yeah. still get them their wine and sell them their wine. And I think you're in a much better place now than the shopping on TV, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, effectively the core of what we do, I think de de like the other week with Dennis touched on that. Effectively we're a logistics company, you know, exactly. we don't yep. make like, like the food provisioners, we don't grow uh, our own grapes and make our own wine. So we don't have a unique individual product. What we're offering is a service. So we're a service driven and logistics company. And for yachts, it's the important part is yeah. the logistics is if you miss the delivery of the chart against Mrs. Wine and, and the service is making sure that you're getting a fair and competitive price and responsive and easy to deal with and everything else. But yeah, we, we, all we do is move wine around the world. So to, to pivot that from yachts actually to go into consumers and to go into in like high net worth individuals around the world was a fairly easy move because we'd already done, we mastered the hard part of the logistics. The rest was just yeah. most normal people. We can, you know, we've got their wine in the box that morning that they've ordered and it's shipped and it's done and it's out of my hair. It's a lot yeah. easier than a yacht. Yeah, so, I agree. Uh, you know, it's, I do, it's an easy pivot. I, think. I do think there's a there's a bit of cachet, a bit of street credibility too, with the kind of the businesses that deal with yachts. You know, because I, I do think that's the yachting is the upper echelon of high net worth individuals and the rich of the rich. And I think if you are in a business with a yacht, that that gives you a bit of. Uh, I, I think it gives you guys a bit of a, a leg up on the on the competition. It's, it's a bit of credence. I think what we. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so the, where we saw the opportunity to even start this is we were using, uh, when I was, I was on, actually, to get back to your point, what boat I was on, but I was on motor yacht scat for four and oh, a half yeah. years. Yeah. And we were buying wine from probably the longest established wine merchant in yachting. And actually, Jess and I just started investing in wine personally with a view to having a seller. So we were like, we were speaking to our guys in London and buying wine. And we were looking at what we were buying for the yacht. and effectively seeing what was it was more than outrageous in terms of the, the margins were with right. double of what it's worth so yeah. you're looking at the 50 grand order and going we've actually got 25 grand's worth of wine there's not 25 grand worth of service which no. made us realize well maybe we should go and do this but then when you get into it the reality is <laughs> is you have to offer a fair and competitive price i mean so yeah, yeah it's you do get the you do get like the uh Working with yachts, I guess you have the certain uh, stereotype or view of the brand. Is that 
people think that you're expensive or people think that you're you sh it's a good service because you must be good if you're working with the yachts the reality is we we offer the same prices to people on the street retail prices and normal yeah. i think fairly yeah. fair pricing rather than and that's why we're able to put our wines online without too much hassle uh, in the sense that we're already market rate whereas i think a lot of other yachting companies find it difficult to take uh the pricing and sell that to a consumer where he's right <laughs> he doesn't have a million euros or a billion euros right. to waste yeah so he can uh, clearly look it up and be like that's twice the price of what it should be i'm not using that yeah yeah ah. i mean obviously there's a value to the service and what we do as well and yeah yeah so uh, yeah touching on what dennis said is i think the other week is we are literally just logistics thing and uh and and you saying is you you've, you've run out of time in the day because we're constantly fighting fires and making plans when yeah a specific wine hasn't shown up and we've got 24 yeah. hours of delivery right where are we going to find that from and so a lot of the costs at the uh for yachting it tends to be the logistic side of that they want it yeah. so quickly that the cost goes up because we have to fly a single bottle from somewhere which is going to cost 60 euro for one bottle but it's only a 40 euro bottle of wine so all of a sudden right. you're like but then you, you, that like, wine, you, you that's lose and... you lose one person <laughs> out of your staff just trying to find that bottle for a whole day ah Plus yeah the, yeah the yeah it's not a cost to get the logistics to get it sent like and, and i want to yeah. explain to people as well like for me as a chef it's similar as a as a chief stew to just to order wine like i send an email a spreadsheet of what i want and then someone else deals with all of that like they just find all of it from dry stores dairy yeah. fruit veg fish meat you name it from whatever country they find it i if i had to do that on my own there's there's no way i would have the time to do that or even come yeah. close to getting the amount of quality quantity say croatia forget it that's it's not possible there's nothing wrong with croatia but they don't have the market to just be holding on to that stuff in this country in the first place so to get to my point is like i type an email spreadsheet i hit send the shit just shows up in three to five days that, whenever that's I, want what, I mean that's what you need that's isn't it service. you want you, so when we talk so about service, that's what that's what you guys yeah. are doing for for us you you want to have peace of mind that when you press that send button you know even if you haven't heard back right. from your provisioner in a couple of days you want peace of mind that that, that it's worked on and it's it's yeah. going to show up and it's yeah, that you, yeah. i don't need to worry i remember no. when jess was chief chief stew on um she went to lady lana was the last one which is uh, i think fairly uh challenging and a lot of ordering to do but you, you want you've got 50 suppliers as a chief stew you're trying to con coordinate fucking lampshades yeah, and wine that's and true soft yeah. drinks and this and yeah you, you really just want to know that the, when the marble email guy, goes out, the wood guy. yeah it's all dealt with and you'll, you'll get an email back with a, a few questions once they've actually looked through it all and here's the questions answer this right action approved delivered so yeah that is the service but i mean that's because we're doing such large orders i guess to yachts the, the value of the service is certainly not 100 percent increase in the value of the wine no, so, uh, shouldn't be. No, so uh, yeah, that's all I do is basically order wine and put it on a pallet or a van, and it's gone. We rarely get to drink <laughs> any of the good stuff, sadly. Yeah, not that McCallum yeah. before. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, yeah. Once it's thirty, so we're, yeah, with the car coming back to the cast. Interestingly, we can we can just bottle it ourselves, so you can bottle it legally and. Uh, and well, yeah, we can bottle it as a Scotch whiskey, and it can have Macallan on the label, but it's not bottled at Macallan. But yeah, well, the Jeff, idea was sort of at some point Scottish Lord overseeing the you know the the bottling process. Like <laughs> oh, it's like it. all of these, all of these uh, things. I guess it's like brie cheese or cheddar cheese. For you. It's all of these different sort of areas of champagne or the Loir or Rhone and whiskeys to say, and they all have. Of set of rules to protect their brand yeah. you know otherwise anyone could make a scotch whiskey right yeah, yeah that's why i'm then, like yeah, to, so to, re, to re bottle it would be a i think just a nightmare wouldn't it like they have no, all that kind it, of that's that, an interest in protection and like because what, what would prevent like someone from just tampering with it 
Splash. Uh, right, uh, we we bottle it for a for a or the idea was to bottle it under the boats, like find a boat or or someone who wants their Ooh. own bottle with their own label, and uh, and so you guys said, about you know what sometimes they do giveaways. We've got clients who do half a million euro plus a year and bottles of Macallan just to have for every day drinking on their boat. <laughs> so the idea is why why not buy something that's effectively significantly less and you can put a picture of your boat on or your wife or your dog or ah, whatever you want to do I, it as a giveaway. I lost my life. I thought it was to resell it as a whole cask in six years. Yeah, I, either or effectively right. as long as it's sold and we're not sitting on it for 50 years <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well hopefully uh we can be financially it's, um, okay it's, to sit on that investment for 50 years that'd be cool oh, i'll be long i'll be long gone <laughs> you are yeah, you're right so what i mean yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i wouldn't be yeah. doing this in uh in 50 years Brandon. still packing boxes of wine <laughs> well i mean i, I <clears throat> I respect you guys so much for dealing with this stuff, like dealing with COVID, dealing with completely oh, changing been... your business during this time. Like it must've been really challenging. So don't look at the future years going forward. If the last year was not an indication of what your life is going to be like going forward. I don't. Yeah. Think... No, you know what? Last, last year we had, a, we've got a, a young boy and we had another baby recently. So it's been. Congratulations, man. It's awesome. Plus a pandemic. I'm glad we're sort of, yeah, that yeah, as, much, as bad as it was, it really, it was a really unique opportunity to work on a lot of things that I'd wanted to do for a long time, but I hadn't found the time. So to, Yoga. to set up an effective, and, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Balancing your shock. Yeah, it was. Yeah, sadly, it's it's weird, isn't it, getting back into. I know you've been traveling around sort of dodging lockdowns and yes. doing what you can not to be stuck anywhere. Yes. The rest of us yeah. have had to suffer just with my, the company of my staff and my wife for a year. So they they are presumably fairly fed up with me by now. I would imagine. Nonsense. Nonsense. <laughs> no, I, I much respect. Um, I just had dinner with um, one of the uh, project managers from, from Larson that I'm working on a, uh, a rather large build for a galley design. And so we went out to dinner. Uh, I stopped by when I was in Northern Europe, uh, this beautiful old like German town. And he hadn't been to a restaurant in six months. He hasn't been out of his house. In six yeah. So I, I, yeah, it's crazy. I have been dodging COVID. I have been dodging lockdown. It's been great. And I've been thanking my lucky stars. I'm as, I'm as mobile as, as I am. And I, as I always have been, but hats off to, to everyone else that hasn't been. And Oh yeah. 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 I mean, we were we were relatively lucky that we have, I can still get to work and do things, and we had to be at office. But those those who've suffered in small apartments around the world with their and actually having to look after their own children, right. heaven forbid, and, yeah, yeah. You suddenly realise that you, <laughs> and, and, children and, should be and, the, under and, the charge of someone else. <laughs> yeah. You should just have fun with the kids, and yeah. then just oh, you, you so, deal with it. <laughs> so you're doing the uh, galley. That's right. You're doing this new galley design uh, yeah. projects. Yeah, that sounds I, I really cool. Be, thanks, man. I think there's going to be a couple of interesting yeah. podcasts coming coming up about that. Um, I was just um, I, I can't I quite give it away this but... morning, actually, and I think he might be on the the project that you're working on up in Lars and the chef in here this morning. It starts in a month or so. We'll talk uh, about no. it off air. No, this one's not dropping the. Yeah, I can't drop any sizes or probably shouldn't even said Larson, but I don't think that's crewing up just yet. But who knows? Don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah, but anyway, I think it's fun. a unique space, isn't it? You found something that's that's not being done. And if I if it's anything like the deck lockers on a on a new boat or any of the organization, you look at it and go, who the hell is who the hell has sort of organized this? And yeah. they clearly have never worked on a boat before. So why not have someone who's worked on the boat who understands how these things work? So you're not trying to retrofit things two years later and yeah. pulling crap out and, and you can be more efficient and you can have a better service if the chef isn't pulling his hair out. And... Yeah, I don't have any hair. Um, yeah, that was like, it was one of the things was... that like, you said, just to make sure I don't get slanked. I'm into the galley. Um, what I've noticed is that there's been people uh, with great educations in yachting 
uh, there's very also very intelligent people with great educations in uh, these these shipyards because they're they're putting out amazing stuff and and I'm learning more and more about the logistics of what it takes to to build a boat and the global logistics of gathering ore you know to to make metal and to make it's fascinating stuff but for whatever reason those two groups aren't talking anywhere yeah so yeah. That, that's kind yeah. of what I noticed and then. Like you said, with deck lockers, it's the same with galleys. Where like, okay, so whoever made this never cooked, um, not not the one I'm on now, but never cooked a day in their life. They're, they're, they've never even worked on a boat. Like so, to, to me, that's disturbing. yeah. But I mean, it's yeah, such a no, unique it's not, uh, work it's environment, not, isn't it? It's an opportunity. It's, it's not easy to be improved, but I, I don't I don't blame them. I just see it as just this the way things are run now and they don't understand what their building was going to be like 20 years down the line. Like this thing's still going to exist in some form or, or another. So I just want to try and make them better. Just make it easier on the yeah. chefs. I'm actually like, I've, I've narrowed it down. Like I'm actually not doing it for anyone, but some chef I've never met to, to come in a boat and oh, the galley's sick or, or the galley's usable. I mean, everyone's going to complain about something, but some of the GAs I've seen, not necessarily from any of the big yards, but some of the, you know, all yards. Some of the original GAs, you're like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa please don't do that! Yeah. Don't do that!" Yeah, it's um, it's it would be nice for people to look at it and go, "Actually, someone's applied a little bit of logical thought, rather than yeah. looking at it and going, I don't even know how they reached this decision. I can't see the, I can't see the process. Yeah. <laughs> like, how yeah. are we here? Yeah, yeah which, So at least, like, like I said before, like that, <laughs> you can that, write handover sure notes just, for them. That and you go, well, the reason why to, this is going to, to annoy know, you, yeah. but the re- sorry, I'm interrupting you, so I'll just sorry. carry on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna go. This is what and I like personally, like he just goes, and then I have to force my way into the conversation. Um, but the uh, love you to death, dude. Um, the uh, the disconnect is real, and I'm not sure why. There's just like no one, there's no one talking. I guess that's that's all I wanted to say. There's so yeah, yeah I, was, I think it's often a lot. A lot of lot of industries are similar, and I guess that's what yeah, we're all trying to, yeah. trying to move towards is is more communicate and like with all these, I mean everything is making better at communication and different tools to help you do different things, and yeah, yeah it's an evolution, isn't it? You yeah. you know after so many years of suffering, you go well, there's an opportunity here, and in five ten years time, we'll see you as the number one yacht des- galley designer and <laughs> boat. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, yeah. maybe not the boat, but that, that trip, that's what I was going to say, is just, it was just information gathering, and it was it's really fascinating to see that side of the industry. Like, I've never been to a shipyard that was capable of building anything over, you know, 60 meters maximum, so now I'm seeing these yards, and it's incredible, man. It's fascinating. I'm really into yeah. it. Like, if this is the next part, not, not I would never I mean, not it's, cook, it's, but it's just the next it's, part of my career. It's just a, it's, it's an incredible thing, and and I don't fault the shipyards. I just, I want to be clear with that. Like they they yeah. have enough on their plates. It's incredible. And I don't think like people think, oh, they make tons of money. I'm like, oh, I think the margins are kind of just, they're not squeaking by, but they're not exactly like, oh, yeah. there's double. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of risk. You know, there is yes. a, a huge yeah. amount of risk. So one Safety. thing goes wrong. Or yeah. I mean, and you, you'd be certain that the contracts are well written, that delays will cause financial hardship. You know, there's penalties right. even. Yes, big so penalties. You, there's, a, yeah. there's a lot riding on each section, I would imagine. And as where you think building a super yacht is glamorous, it's it's really it's not. It's just a big shipyard. It could be a cruise ship or a super yacht. Yeah. It's totally irrelevant. Yeah. Yeah. You start and, those, uh, those, those you little little realize that. Those. And then, yeah. and then you, you think that like when you come in the industry and you start looking up at these big northern European yards, it's like, oh, I'll get to those shipyards. It's going to be like perfectly. Like, it's going to be clinical. And they are. They're a massive improvement over the original ones, but they're still like, it's so cool. It's still yeah. like such like blue collar, just ship work. You know, it's like, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's raw, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. You, you forget about how much welding and stuff goes into building the yeah. hull and this. And yeah, it's a lot yeah. goes into every stage. But yeah, I, I can't imagine the margins are phenomenally huge and Mm-mm. there's certainly a, a huge, huge amount of risk. Yeah, especially Massive. with the cost of last year, I would imagine raw materials have gone up significantly. Yes, and, and also delivery of raw materials. Of raw materials. I was at the shipyard and they were saying, yeah. like, just getting aluminum right now is almost impossible. Like, just, just to 
to find yeah. the trucks. You can't find it, and then also transport to get it. Yeah, like nothing has been Tran built. Transport in the, year. Like, for, the uh, system is broken. Transport for us has been a, certainly the first few months of COVID was just horrendous, and it's. I think the pressure going on to the logistics companies was huge. Bet, then coupled yeah. with the stupidity of Brexit in uh, oh, December, I kind of forgot. Which, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Just, yeah. Well, that's I deal a, that's with what that I worry about every COVID. day. I just worry about COVID is like that underlying band of tension that goes around the entire planet at the same time. Like I just that's what worries me about COVID. Is that there's all yeah. this build up and this build up and there's it takes a couple more things and like boom we're in some kind of like world catastrophe world war or some other bullshit that's what i don't want it's made, but certainly made like people more um nationalist in the sense of yes. sort of yeah closed down looking after yeah which is a shame and it's a shame you know what brexit in my opinion and it's only my opinion but it's often right is uh it was a stupid idea and i, I can't see how uh, not working together and as a whole as you know power and numbers in my yeah. opinion but and yeah i hope that covid has doesn't have a huge effect on these things but yeah it does feel like people are becoming more insular and and looking out less to doing certain trade and it's becoming more difficult but yeah we'll see i yeah. perhaps it's a natural reaction I'd imagine it's a natural reaction to any sort of pandemic or disease spreading that you want to protect yours and those around you. So, you... yeah, it's kind yeah, of see how it pans out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I like trying to keep these at, at an hour, and we're at an hour and ten minutes. Okay, my friend. All right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I do tend thanks to waffle. For, uh, thanks for coming on, man. <laughs> thanks for yeah, having me. Good, uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what we. Um, I'm not entirely sure what we were meant to be talking about, but. I felt it was, yeah, it was fun. How get talking with you, Brennan, goes <laughs> like this. It's just everyone else just to watch us will go, that, are you sure that was an hour? It felt like four. <laughs> Maybe they should drink beers yeah. while they watch it. Maybe that'll help it go faster. I don't, I don't know. If, I, if any fun. of you three watchers are watching still at this point, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, huge fans. Thank you for watching. Thank yeah. you for watching. Uh, we're huge fans of them. But um, thanks a lot for coming on, man. I can't wait to see you someday somehow yeah. maybe maybe in august but um thanks ed thanks for coming on get the yeah there's out. always a place for you us so yeah cheers guys thanks guys cheers brandon speak soon see you man thank you